that what is showing on your screen? Is yes, I see the PowerPoint. Is, uh, okay, wonderful, great. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome. What you're looking at is a Jacobethan-styled historic grade school designed by William Itner and built by E.C. Girard in 1906 and 7. At the turn of the 20th century, this innovative E-type style school allowed for good daylight and air circulation for all students, which was different than it had been previously. Following rehabilitation from a school to 45 new residences, this completed historic tax credit project provides residents the opportunity to benefit from the same large window openings and plan features. At the interior, polished original stone and wood floors are still used in the hallways and the classrooms that are now apartments. Glass fronted cabinets that once held books and school supplies are now, now hold household goods. This building has a new use in the 21st century, but is clearly recognizable at the exterior and interior to its original design and purpose. Thank you again for joining me this morning to hear about historic tax credit programs in Missouri. I am Andrea Harries, the Architectural Preservation Unit Coordinator of the Missouri State Historic Preservation Office. In the abstract for this talk, you learn that during the fiscal year 2020, Missouri property owners who completed historic tax credit projects collectively received $625 million in tax credits. That's a significant economic incentive that supports retention and continued use of our cultural resources in Missouri. Today, I will cover some of the basics of the historic tax credit program and provide you some resources that may help find, may help you find answers to more specific questions about historic tax credits. Historic tax credit programs are voluntary programs that provide tax credits for approved rehabilitation work to private property owners. This single sentence states three factors that are primary to the construct of historic tax credit programs. First, multiple programs exist in Missouri that work to retain and preserve our historic built environment. Those programs have varying ordinances and procedures in application and approval processes, some of which are mandatory. Applicants enter the historic tax credit programs voluntarily. Second, historic tax credit programs are economic incentive programs that, for lack of a better term, pay out at the completion of a project that has been, that has been determined as meeting the certified rules and regulations. Third, private property owners only are eligible for receipt of tax credits. Nonprofit entities are excluded from receiving tax credits the asterisk following <clears throat> the private property uh, owner statement um, just denotes that the IRS has an extended definition of who must file for the credits that is beyond the scope of this presentation. Okay, so who administers the historic tax credit programs? Originating in 1976, the Federal Historic Tax Credit Program is managed by the Technical Preservation Services, a division of the National Park Service in partnership with the Internal Revenue Services. In 1998, Missouri began to administer a historic okay. tax credit program under the management of the Department of Economic Development. These are independent historic tax credit programs that have some program similarities but operate as separate entities. For your reference, listed under each entity are certified federal and state regulations, such as 36 CFR 67. These regulations provide the structure for each program and are accessible to the public. So who am I and why am I speaking to you about historic tax credits? I am one team member of the Missouri State Historic Preservation Office, commonly referred to as SHPO. The Missouri SHPO is one of 59 historic preservation offices that carries out the responsibilities of the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966. These offices, along with tribal preservation offices, may go by different names than SHPO. Multiple divisions within the Missouri State Historic Preservation Office provide focus on a variety of activities and programs. If you're attending this presentation, you are most likely familiar with the Certified Local Government Program. 
staff also review nominations for the National Register of Historic Places, oversee the state's architectural and archaeological survey programs, manage Section 106 review and compliance, and administer historic preservation grant programs. In addition, the Missouri SHPO has the Architectural Preservation Services Unit, we're commonly referred to as APS. The APS unit is comprised of a group of architectural historians, architects, and support staff working with historic tax credit projects in partnership with the National Park Service and the Department of Economic Development. The State Historic Preservation Office serves as a partner in the tax, historic tax credit process along with the National Park Service and the Department of Economic Development. Specifically for the APS, that partnership involves being the first point of contact for property owners. We can help provide information on appropriate treatments and regulations along with technical assistance. We frequently contact people with records of buildings and districts listed in the National Register of Historic Places. We visit people and advise applicants on re <clears throat> rehabilitation projects. The majority of our time is focused on reviewing projects and working with applicants so that we can make certification recommendations to the National Park Service and the Department of Economic Development. I need to add a side note clarifying what I am not, so hold on to your seats for a second. I am not an employee of MPS, IRS, or DED. I am not a lawyer, tax expert, or accountant. What I am sharing today is from my experience with historic tax credit projects, and all the information presented is sourced from information that is publicly available and should be examined and reviewed independently by an applicant. If you experience any of the listed symptoms, you should tell your health care provider immediately. So, I've introduced three agencies so far involved in oversight and distribution of historic tax credits. It's important to know that the scope and location of your project may dictate what other agencies and experts you will need involved in the project. SHPO, the National Park Service, and the Department of Economic Development will likely not be the only entities involved. Oftentimes, applicants need to seek out and retain the assistance of historic preservation consultants, architects, trade contractors, approval from local historic preservation commissions, certificates of appropriateness, and approval from permit agencies, legal and accounting support. A more appropriate title for this presentation may be It Takes a Village. Sometimes a big village and sometimes a smaller village. In the next slide, I'm going to take going to pause talking about the various entities and specialists that may be involved in a project and take a look at the incentives of the historic tax credit program. So what is a tax credit? Simply, it's a certificate issued following completion of a certified historic structure. There are similarities and differences between the federal and Missouri historic tax credit programs. Uh, one similarity is that the credits are issued at the completion of a project, so they do not provide upfront funding to initiate or pay for a project that is in process. And there's a little asterisk at the end of that statement that is to remind you and your accountant to check the fine print for specific definitions and terms concerning final completion and filing for credits. So concerning some basic differences between the two programs, for the federal program, the credits are to be used at the completion of a project for tax payment for the applied property, so to the building or buildings that the tax credits are issued and to be taken rateably over five years. That is an expectation that the credits will be used beginning within the year that the completed project is placed in service. There's a five-year recapture period. If the property is sold by the applicant within five years following certification, the credits are recaptured at an adjusted percentage. And the properties, the tax credits, sorry, cannot be sold. Rules and regulations issued by the IRS and applied via federal tax um, form uh, 3468 if you're interested. For the state, the property does not have to be retained for a period of time following completion. 
so the property can be sold. The tax issue, the tax credits, um, are first applied to issuance fees, back taxes, then current and future taxes, or state tax credits for Missouri can be sold. And as reported by the Missouri Department of Revenue, often tax credits are sold at a variable market value, but must be sold for at least 75% of trans transferable, transferred credit value. So it's a it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and if you uh, do decide to try to sell your tax credits, um, Missouri tax credits, um, they often are not exchanged for a dollar-to-dollar, -dollar, but a reduced rate, which as I stated is variable, but it's at a minimum of 75% of the tr transferred credit value. So how much of a tax credit can be issued for the tax credit programs? For the federal programs, tax credits are issued at 20% of allow allowable qualified rehab expenses and must have an income producing use of the building for five years following rehabilitation. For the federal program, a rehabilitation can also encompass owner occupancy, but a commercial endeavor must also be included within the building. The project cannot be used by owner occupants solely. So it can't be your house that you have now and then you want to use the federal credits and continue to live there solely. And that's all that happens in the building. But for the state, the historic tax credits are issued at 25% of allowable qualified rehab expenses. And they can have an income producing and or solely owner occupied use of the building following rehabilitation. So together, if you qualify for both programs, you can receive a total of 45% of qualified rehab expenses. I will cover the ifs for qualifiers later in the presentation, although I will mention again that each state credit program is unique. For Missouri, credits are available to both commercial and residential projects, as already stated. This is notably beneficial to applicants because many states do not make tax credits available for residential properties solely, and there are a limited number that offer 25%. So the previous slide listed QREs. The acronym QRE stands for Qualified Rehabilitated Expenditure, which is an allowable expense that will determine the amount of your tax credit. Not all work and materials are factored into the percentage of issued tax credits. I listed federal credits um, at the top first on this slide, and the federal rules identify a tax credit, a qualified rehab expenditure, as any expenditure for a structural component of a building. And I have some examples listed there, which would, you know, kind of common sense, walls, floors, ceilings, chimneys, your HVAC system, um, elevators, life safety issues. But I also have soft and hard costs issued there. A soft cost would be something like um, having your architectural fees covered or included within the qualified rehab expenditure. For the state, I broke down the soft costs a little bit more so you can see that um, your risk insurance can be included. Developer fees, your NPS tax credit fee when you have your applications reviewed at the National Park Service. Before it is reviewed, you must pay um, a percentage of your uh, qualified rehab expenses for that to have your application reviewed. Um, soft costs for the state also involve professional fees, again, such as architect, historic consultants, CPAs. You can um, claim limited financing at costs, financing costs. And then for the hard costs at the state, they're generally the same as, as identified in the National Park Service. Again, there are differences that exist between the two programs. The state program is somewhat more extensive in allowable soft costs. So if you understand that list of qualified rehab expenditures exists, then you have likely surmised that there are non-qualified expenditures. When I was first learning about the historic tax credit program, um, someone shared a little anecdotal story that if you 
uh, take a building or a house and turn it upside down and shake it, anything that falls out would not be considered a qualified rehab rehabilitation expenditure. That is not exactly true, but the antidote antidote does create a memorable image in one's mind. So under our little upside down house there, I have listed some of the items that would not be considered qualified rehab expenditures. Furniture, closet systems, tacked carpet, glued carpet does, but there's a lot of variance in whether carpet's allowed at all. Um, appliances, window treatments, um, et cetera, et cetera, as you can see in the list I have up there. Again, not a complete list. Federal and state, um, since the, the lists differ, you should see the details published by each program and the related tax rules. So now knowing about qualified and non-qualified expenses, you may be curious about what can and cannot be done to historic buildings to earn tax credits. I want to briefly and broadly examine what is expected concerning work to the properties. Excuse me one moment, I'm just going to take a drink. At the core, the programs exist to provide economic incentive to maintain our cultural resources for continued use now and into the future. Concerning what is expected, the Secretary of the Interior Standards for the Treatment of Historic Properties addresses four types of treatments, preservation, restoration, reconstruction, and rehabilitation. The tax credit programs adhere to 10 standards for rehabilitation. Rehabilitation allows for development of a compatible use for a property through repair, keep it and fix it, alterations, and when necessary, additions all the while preserving those portions or features which convey its historical, cultural, and architectural values. Interiors and exteriors are evaluated with equal importance, and materials and spaces are protected under the standards. The building that housed the Herschel and Benheim corn cob pipe factory, as seen in this 1934 Historic American Building Survey photo on the left side of the screen, is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. The building was built circa 1870. <clears throat> but as you can see in this 2017 photo in the upper right-hand corner, the, very, the building experienced changes from earlier years. Following completion of the rehabilitation in 2019, sorry about that, the building looks closer to the 1934 image then in 2017, but not exactly. Namely, the signage was not repainted, the altered shape of the center upper window was kept, and some life safety measures for code were installed. The tax credit program does allow for changes, and the building did not have to be returned to a museum quality state. But to meet the program, key features were retained and returned that allowed it to be recognizable to a certain period of significance. Some of you may be familiar with um, what we term period of significance, which appears not only in our National Register listings, but that is also carried through to tax credit programs. <clears throat> I also want to note that whether or not a tax credit is claimed for a particular treatment the entirety of the property, including all functionally related buildings and the site, are evaluated for compatibility to the standards. An applicant cannot expect that meeting the standards in one area of the building, such as the first floor, and not in other areas, such as the upper floors, will meet the program requirements. One cannot just say, well, I won't claim the credits for that part of the job um, that wouldn't meet the standards. Sometimes the treatments and work are not extensive, but maybe just a few things that help to keep the historic buildings in working order and lived in. At the completion of these projects, the buildings will not experience significant changes, but will be sustained through, for example, repointing, roof repairs, um, uh, heating and cooling system updates, and also kitchen and bath updates.
Tax credit projects can be large or small, and the federal and state programs do have variances, but there are four basic qualifiers that both programs share. Quickly, they are the ver that verified historic significance and integrity, approved proposed work, approved completed work, and the project must meet economic qualifiers for eligibility. I'll discuss these points a little bit more. So first, the historic building must be listed in the National Register of Historic Places or be certified as contributing to the significance of a registered historic district. For the federal program, the tax credit application can be submitted prior to a building being listed. But by the completion, it must be listed a listed building to be a certified rehabilitation. For the Missouri Historic Tax Credit Program, the building must already be listed on the National Register prior to application submission. Information and assistance in finding, how, finding out if a property is already listed or how to get a building potentially listed on the National Register of Historic Places is provided by the National Register Services Unit of the SHPO. Second, proposed rehabilitation work must be approved as meeting the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation. The Architectural Preservation Services Unit works with you concerning your proposed work. The written proposed work supported by photos and drawings showing the property <coughs> Um, showing the property is reviewed before the work begins. As stated earlier, we can help provide information on appropriate treatments and regulations, along with technical assistance for meeting the rehabilitation standards. We may direct you to resources, such as the publication above, which identifies the standards, but also offers guidelines for meeting those standards. You may meet us during a visit to your property if you apply for tax credits and receive advice and ask us questions. Third, the completed rehabilitation work must be approved as meeting the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation. The Architectural Preservation Services Unit evaluates the completed work. And like the previous two steps, makes recommendations to the National Park Service and the Department of Economic Development that the finished product retains the historic character of the property. Fourth, a project must meet economic qualifiers for eligibility. The qualifiers for the federal and state program do differ. So for the federal, you must meet the substantial rehabilitation test, which is the adjusted basis of the building and its structural components, or the rehabilitation project must exceed $5,000. In general, the building is considered substantially rehabilitated if during the 24 months measuring that period um, selected by the taxpayer, um, and that ends within the taxable year of the QRE, that that amount exceeds the greater of the adjusted basis. And that is a formula derived and published by the IRS, which has to do with acquisition, depreciation, and multipliers. For the state, the rehabilitation must exceed 50% of the acquisition cost. NPS does advise to consult a tax advisor prior to beginning a project to make sure that you qualify and that the credit is beneficial to you. And for the state program, of course, um, involvement from a professional is encouraged at the beginning. And um, I know that for the state program, you also must have um, your cost benefit um, paperwork prepared by a licensed CPA in the state of Missouri. So with some of the basics outlined, I want to leave you with references on how to start the application process. The federal and state websites include application forms, rules, and instructions. Additionally, the Federal Technical Preservation Service site contains extensive and comprehensive listings and links to publications relating to recommended treatments and care for historic properties. Since recommendation for meeting the Secretary of the Interior Standards are required for both programs, the state website often contains links to the NPS website. 
there is a lot in the federal website, um, and I think it's very well done. And it takes you from explaining the program to attaining the applications to linking you to all the publications that they've released for decades about how to treat historic properties, best practices. Here's a clip from the IRS website. Um, and they keep an updated frequently asked questions page that I find very informative and in plain language. Here is the IRS webpage addressing rehabilitation tax credits, which also has other links embedded in it. This chart, uh, which is sourced from a lecture sponsored by the National Trust for Historic Preservation, so when um, I encountered it, this was shown for all um, for na national application, so it's not listing individual state programs. But this chart organizes entities involved in the certification process. Today I focused primarily on information from the National Park Service, which is along the top line, just below the yellow, the Missouri Department of Economic Development, and the State Historic Preservation Office. And we, of course, come into play in the second section here. What I want to conclude with is the local partners involved in historic preservation who are also part of the village. Missouri Preservation is a nonprofit organization based out of St. Louis that serves all of Missouri. And um, this, the slide underneath um, notes that an organization such as this um, occurs in almost every state. So Missouri Preservation is our group. and Local preservation commissions, such as Historic Kansas City and the Cultural Resource Office in St. Louis, are also involved in preservation projects. Involvement and approval from one entity, such as NPS and DED or SHPO, and a local preservation commission cannot be exchanged for another. But all are sincerely invested in historic preservation for Missouri and play a necessary role. Thank you for your time today. The main phone line for the State Historic Preservation Office is listed here. We encourage anyone needing our services to contact